Good evening, everyone. Thank you so very much, Hamid Shak. Another round of applause for him, please. So we will begin tonight's proceedings with a land acknowledgement, and I will call Ash up, who is a, a student here at York and is enrolled in the Black Canadian Studies Certificate Program. And you'll hear a bit more about that throughout the evening. So please welcome Ash. Good evening, my name is Ash, and as Tika said, I'm a student of the Black Canadian Studies Certificate. Um, we recognize the many indigenous lands, nations that have long-standing relationships with the territories upon which York University campuses are located that precede the establishment of York University. York University acknowledges its presence on the traditional territory of, the, of many indigenous nations. The area known as Tikaranto has been taking care of the Anishinaabek and Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Huron Wendat, and the Metis. It is now home to many indigenous peoples. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credited First Nation, the territory subject of the Dish with this One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, and agreement to peaceably share and care of the, for the Great Lakes region. Thank you. Uh, this evening's presentation is a collaboration of several faculties and departments here at York, and bringing greetings on behalf of the Faculty of Education is Professor and Associate Dean Research, Dr. Heather Lotherington. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this wonderful event. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the Faculty of Education, uh, our Dean Lyndon Martin is out of the country tonight, or he would be here sitting with all of us. Um, we're, I'm so pleased to see you all here, bringing together faculty, staff, students, and community members, and dignitaries as well. So I'm going to join you. I'm going to sit down and enjoy the show, but we are very, very pleased as the Faculty of Education to welcome you here tonight. Thank you, Heather, and I just realized I did not introduce myself. Good evening. My name is Tika Pinnock. I work with the Jean Augustine Chair in the uh, Faculty of Education here. I am pleased to now bring someone to the stage that I work with every day and spend a lot of time, perhaps way too much time with, <laughs> Professor Carl James, who holds the Jean Augustine Chair in Education, Community, and Diaspora in the Faculty of Education here at York. Uh, he's also the Affirmative Action, Equity, and Inclusivity Officer. An educational background in sociology, his teaching and research interests include examination of how race, ethnicity, gender, class, and citizenship intersect and mediate opportunities in education and employment for racialized and marginalized youth, and black youth in particular. Please help me in welcoming Professor Carl James. Good evening. Thanks very much. Thanks very much for your good evening. I hope it will be. Uh, I'm pleased to welcome you to the Jean Augustine Chair in Education, Community and Diaspora's fourth annual Black History Month celebrations here at York University. This evening's presentation, Word, Sound, Power, a celebration of black artistic expression has its roots in an event that the chair held in the fall commemorating the 100th anniversary of the birth of Jamaican poet and cultural icon Louise Bennett Coverley. The generative conversation of that evening turned our attention to the larger discussion of black cultural production in Canada. We are all well aware of the hypervisibility of black artistic expressions, yet the invisibility in terms of its recognition of its African roots. In the fall, <clears throat> when the chairs, faculty associates, professors Andrea Davis, Leslie Saunders, Michelle Johnson, and Naomi Norque met, we decided that our focus for 2020 would be the black arts in Canada. Professor Saunders brought forth the idea of hosting a black cultural, black poetry recitation contest to raise the profile of formal poetry by black poets in our high school. The contest will be held here 
in the spring. Another event that will be forthcoming is one will be with Professor Michelle Johnson, and that will include the documentary Blacks in Post-Sec, which will fe feature our own Andre Harriet, a York University graduate. Desmond Cole will also speak that evening with reference to his recently published book, The Skin We're In, and that's March 8th. And of course, for tonight's presentation, I must give special thanks to Professor Nomi Nokwe for taking a lead in tonight's planning. This evening, you will witness spectacular performances showcasing the black artistic expression here at York University. We have musical performances by ensembles in York's Department of Music, as well as spoken word performances from members of the course in the Department of Humanities. I must express special thanks to Professors Karen Burke and Wendy Brathwaite for their significant contribution in planning our program, and to Mike Cardo and the many students who are performing tonight. I would be remiss if I did not bring to your attention Black Studies certificate that you have been seeing the poster around and that certificate is in the Department of Humanities. The certificate developed and coordinated by Professor Andrea Davis is one response to students call for more inclusive education program here at York. To this end, the certificate seeks to advance knowledge of the cultures and histories of black Canada. The other way in which the university seeks to recognize the black presence is through the Jean Augustine Chair. I'm sure Dr. Davis, Chair of the Department of Humanities, will have further thoughts on the Black Studies Certificate when she gives her closing remarks. But I do want to thank her and the Department of Humanities for their sponsorship of tonight's presentation. I must also thank our presenting sponsor, Unifor, who has sponsored our annual Black History Month events for the past three years. Initially launched in 2008, the Jean Augustine Chair in Education Community of Diaspora is a university chair in the Faculty of Education. Our aim is to advance access, equity, and inclusivity to education through research, community engagement, and collaborative action. Bearing the name of the Honorable Dr. Jean Augustine, the first black woman elected to the Parliament of Canada, it is only fitting that we honor her legacy by continuing to engage the community in acknowledgement and recognition of the black presence in Canada. And Jean is with us here tonight and will recognize you. But last, but last not, but not least, I would like to thank the Department of Music for their support of tonight's program. Present with us is the Chair of the Department, Dr. Louise Raisin, who will bring greetings. Professor Raisin is an ethnomusicologist with a background in musicology and education. Her research concerns music and dance in transnational contexts and global networks. Music, gender, music, place, and memory with a focus on Tatro mountain region of southern Poland. Professor Raisin is currently working on a monograph on ethnography and narrative interventions in music life stories. She co-edited the volume, Performing Gender, Place, and Emotion. Active with international and national scholarly music societies, including the Society of Musicology, the International Council for Trans traditional music, and the Canadian Society for Traditional Music, Council for Traditional Music, and the Canadian Society for Traditional Music. Yeah, two different things. In addition to previous teaching appointments at Queen's University, the University of Toronto, and the Ontario College of Arts, uh, she has also taught in Toronto public school system and has been involved in programming for children with special needs. Trained in classical piano, she has performed Balkan and Polish Tatra music with Toronto-based groups. So I now introduce and will bring to you Professor Razin. Thanks for having me. Hi. Thank you very much for that very generous introduction. 
I am just delighted to be here. Uh, it gives me great pleasure and honor to uh, welcome you here on behalf of the Department of Music. And it's a wonderful opportunity for us in the department to share on, uh, in this event on, on such a really memorable occasion. So it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for us. Uh, the department has long offered students opportunities to experience the richness and the power of black music through courses and performance opportunities here at York. Um, as some of you may know, York University was the first university in Canada to offer jazz as uh, part of its curriculum. It is also the first music program in Canada to introduce gospel music as a part of its music program. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, these things are clearly thriving. <laughs> and you'll hear more of that uh, as we go. Um, and they provide many, many rich experiences for our students through coursework and also through performances uh, in a variety of different um, uh, sizes and, and ensembles uh, in that way. This evening, you'll hear three of those ensembles in the course of this evening. In about 20 minutes, uh, you'll hear the R&B ensemble which is instructed and directed by the very versatile Mike Cadeau. And then about uh, halfway or later on in the program, um, a, a small jazz combo will take the stage. This is one of many jazz combos that we have in the Department of Music, and this one is led by Kevin Turcott. And the four ensemble members, the four students you'll hear, are uh, Gershwin Kaur on vocals, <laughs> Rasha Muhalad on vibraphone, <laughs> Leah Che on bass, <laughs> and also Reese Bartlett on drums. So they'll be coming later, and then Towards the end of the program, uh, you'll be enjoying the pleasures of listening to our own York University Gospel Choir, <laughs> which has been led by the indefatigable and uh, inspired uh, leadership of uh, Professor uh, Karen Burke since the Gospel Choir was founded in 2005. So we look forward to this very full program tonight and thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you. Greetings. Ooh. Greetings. My name is Moshin. This page is a beginning, word, stories that release the body, fills the souls, come see the mystery, the crazy, hear the screams, the mellow, the anger, the pain, 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 the fire that never dies, the rage of the mind, the urgent, the hurt, the why, the who, the what, the bleeds of the heart. Listen, let's talk, speak love, noises blocked, voices wake, fill the space, even walls won't waste, uplift optimism, prayer, spoken echoes over microphones, griots on thrones, speaking our peace, speaking our peace, peace because we all, we all have a story to tell. This is a piece inspired by the 2019 class of Griots to MCs, Culture, Performance, and Spoken Word. Over the past four years, approximately 140 students have explored the power of spoken word, the creative space where word and sound meet. Steeped in the worlds of Zora Neale and Miss Lou, Tiongo and Claude McKay, Sonia Sanchez, Fred Hampton, George Eliot Clark, Debbie Young, L. Jones and Kendrick Lamar, Toni Morrison, and Tozaki Shange, Edward Kamau Brathwaite. As these growing poets' musings turn to writings and writings turn to performance, each griot to MC embodies the rhythms and the rhythms of the drum and the dub, the bop and the hip-hop, the sermon, the spiritual, the scat, 
Through the voice, through our voices, the word comes alive, breathes, bellows, quips, and questions, rebels, resists, remembers, and reveals. I am pleased to introduce four artists slash poets slash spoken wordists from the most recent class of Griasta MCs, Amaka, Citra, Mikhail, and Vanessa, who you'll see up on this stage today, who will bring their words and sounds to share on this power-filled stage with each artist up here and with you. For as Kamal Brathwaite once said in the history of the voice, the oral tradition makes demands not only on the poet, but also on the audience to complete the community. Hence, we have the creation of a continuum where the meaning truly resides. Introducing Amaka. Thank you, Motion. My name is Amaka, and this piece is called Genesis Without Words. In the beginning, there was nothing. Water. Thank you. In the beginning, there was nothing. Water, darkness. God brooding in measureless solitude, this is how I exist. Dreamer that I am, night hours squandered in other realms, 1 a.m., waist deep in a poem that does not exist, 2 a.m., the tides leave nothing behind, 4.15, a mirror offers no reflection. I wake in the wrong language, poet that I am, desperate to speak, yet unused to the act. Newborn, poetry as solace has been there, has saved my life over and over, black girl grew up in between. Poetry has been familiar face, hand to hold, not home, but friend that sees, asks thee questions. Where is your tongue? Tell me, tell me where it hurts. Poetry as courage to do what must be done a rolling up of my sleeves and digging through the years, a mouth, a baby tooth, a wizened laugh, a broken dance, broken heart, bloody hands, wounds, soul ties, bones, remnants of my sanity, all these selves, frenemies, like you wouldn't believe old skin, Pictures I couldn't burn, mom's stories, the ones she told and the ones she didn't have to. Daddy's secrets, his secrets, secrets till I get to poetry. The necessity to write with or without words, write empty handed. As I am, I will write, write, with awe, without grace, write, stutter, speak, write, let there be light, until, until I am clarified. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My, uh, my piece tonight involves a little bit of interaction, so we're just gonna do a quick one-two practice, okay? So the line is gonna be, ladies get low, oh, oh. <laughs> Feel the music move your body. I need you to repeat body. So we're gonna practice, okay? <laughs> ladies get low, oh, oh. Feel the music move your body. Brilliant, okay. <laughs> 
So I walked into this party last weekend. Couldn't believe what my eyes were seeing. Sisters on their phones all night. Brothers lined up on the walls upright. Whatever happened to dancing, romancing, sweating out your hair with your friends, gallivanting, letting the bass take you to outer space. Come on, there ain't no time to waste. Ladies, get low, oh, oh, for the music, move your body. Yes, lay, fellas, get low, oh, oh, for the music, move your body. Oh, have a good time, sip on some wine, why don't you, oops, sorry, have a good time, sip on some wine, why don't you talk, give that a try, put down your phone, you're in your prime, forget your worries, feeling divine, breathing the music, feeling divine, close all your apps, leave it behind, go to the toe, get someone fine, dance until you see the sun shine. <laughs> Thank Could you please give another round of applause for Citra and our beautiful queen. Thank you to professors uh, James and Razin for their greetings. And we're going to welcome the R&B Ensemble, who are making their way now to the stage. So please welcome them with a huge round of applause. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as the band sets up, I was asked to kill some of the dead air. So I'm sharpening up my jokes backstage. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, thank you very, very much uh, to the Jean Augustine Chair in Education for hosting this wonderful event. And um, thank you very much for the uh, collaboration between the Faculty of Education and, of course, uh, the Department of Music and the Faculty of uh, Liberal Arts and Professional Studies in the Department of Humanities. It's a pleasure um, and an honor to have been asked to uh, participate in this wonderful event and um, such a beautiful celebration of um, black music and black arts in a very special month. And um, without going into too much detail, of course, we can all appreciate the legacy and the importance of the, um, of, uh, the black arts in music especially. And at, here at York University, we celebrate that diversity, of course. As our department chair mentioned, uh, the first jazz program in Canada and um, the first gospel sort of choir in, in um, university. And I'd love to say the first rhythm and blues ensemble, but um, we will say, that, how about the best rhythm and blues ensemble? How about that? <laughs> so we're going to perform a set of music for you that's going to sort of um, span several decades of this music. And it's always extremely difficult to choose repertoire because there is such a wealth of music and wonderful music that of course, uh, expresses um, a, a diversity of uh, culture and sort of as we were going through and choosing repertoire for this, we tried to kind of, um, you know, get a, a broad spectrum of, of music. So I hope you enjoy it. Please feel free to dance. We've got some aisles here. <laughs> Just don't jump on stage because the security here is really tough and they'll bounce you out. But Please feel free to participate, and I hope you do enjoy, and thank you very, very much for having us.
of good reasons to keep on keeping on keep on keeping on i got to make the best of best of best of a bad situation bad situation ever since that day ever i woke up that and day. found that you were gone 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 darkness all around me blocking out the sun Talking to anyone, emptiness has found me, and it just won't let me go. Go right on living, but why? I just don't know. Too strong, got to keep on keeping on. You're too strong, got to keep on Staring down reality Don't do me no good Cause our misunderstanding Is too well understood Too well understood Such a sad, sad season Sad, sad season When a good love dies Not a day goes by A bad situation. bad situation Ever since that day I woke up that day and You were gone I really got to you I got to use My imagination I got to use To think of good reasons I got to use To keep on keeping up I got to use I got to make the best of Best of best
Senhor do Baby. I mean, we really, really, really got our thing together. And isn't it nice? I mean, when you sit and think about it, it certainly is nice, isn't it? I can feel myself slipping more and more ways into that super world of our own. Nobody but you and me. Nobody but you. to all of my dreams, yes. you're my sun, my moon, my guiding star, my kind of wonderful, that's what you are, I know there's only, only one like you, there's no way, no way. I made to You're all I'm living for With your love I'll keep forever more My first You're my first You're my last My everything In you I found So many ways a love a love so new Only you can bring him, yes Can't you see it's you You made me feel this way You're like a fresh morning dew On a brand new day I see so many ways That I can love Wrong with me until your kiss 
helped me name it. Now I'm no longer doubtful of what I'm living for. If I Steps, no. I'm 
gonna let the music move me around. I gotta dance but ain't got no steps. I'm gonna let the music move me around. Will it go around in circles? Will it fly high like a bird up in the sky? Will it go around in circles? Will it fly high like a bird up in the sky? Yeah. 
Let's try again. That was the R&B Ensemble, directed by Mike Cato. I'll be the first to admit that clearly I've been sleeping on the talent here at York because I didn't know all of this was happening here on campus. So thank you again to the, the ensemble. You met her earlier, but now we're going to officially meet her, uh, Wendy Motion Brathwaite. Motion is a playwright, screenwriter, poet, and MC, fusing word, sound, and drama for the stage, page, and screen. Her work has been featured across Canada, in the US, the Caribbean, Europe, and Africa. Her words have been published in Motion in Poetry, Everything Remains Raw, and The Black Notes, seen on stage, and experienced in the site-specific Dora-nominated Nightmare Dream. Her recent productions uh, include Oratorio, a theatrical mixtape along with DJ Lopez, and the real-world award-winning short film A Man's Story, which has screened in film festivals in London, Ghana, Belgium, and Toronto. She is a course director here at York, and I'm pleased to present a uh, motion. Please welcome her. Word, sound, power. This is for my city dwellers, my storytellers, my soundscapers, music makers, and my dreamers of dreams. This is for the beat layers, the street sayers, the graph writers, and the painters. This is for the crate keepers, the image freezers, the lens seekers, and the photos. This is for the spinners, the rewinders, pull it back and drop the needle, pull it back and come againers. This is for the movers, the body users, the kinetic, acrobatic, defined gravity provers. This is for the filmmakers, for the actors and the activators, for my sculptors and my can sprayers. This is for the da dubbers, for the dancers, the scribes and the scholars. This is for the freestylers, my improvisers, my poetical, lyrical, spiritual vocalizers. This is for our speechifiers. This is for our uplifters and our uprisers. This is for you, our ancestors, our people blessers, for our elders and our children. This is for our vision, for our villages, our hoods, our nations, our truth. This is for our culture, for our generation. This is for our creator and our creation. This is for the inner being and the outer, for the say it louder, whack and prouder. This is for the word, this is for the sound. This is for the word, this is for the sound. This is for the power. <laughs> word. I'm inspired today by the words of poet Gwendolyn Brooks when she writes that she wanted to create poems that I could take into a tavern, into the street, into the halls of a housing project. She speaks of her words as ones that can live both within and beyond the pages of a book. Words that could step out of the covers and be experienced by the people, her communities, in black spaces, wherever they may be. Wherever or whether they're held or felt, our first experiences with words are often the living symbols and the living syllables of an Anansi story, of a folk tale, a children's song, lyrics of a tune, a schoolyard game, and very so often our very first names. These early words to be shared, a common language, a communal codification, and affirmation is a speaking into existence. When I say, in the beginning there was, I want you to say, word. In the beginning there was. 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 In the beginning, God dropped a lyric, thrusted a rhyme, and said that word would control my destiny. I don't know when I became a poet slash rapper slash spoken word artiste, but somewhere between my first cry and the cools I shared with my son, word has always been here. It was hidden between the covers on the bookshelves at home. It was shared in rhyme when mommy taught me how to read the rabbit ran. It was booming out of my dad's handmade speakers as Bob Marley wailed, so just said. It cracked off a of black wax as the last poets intoned, when the revolution comes. 
It was the central base of Linton Quezzy Johnson's half yard, half British swang. It was the night is beautiful, so are the faces of my people. It was Langston Hughes's Black Like Me. It was the Toronto Dub Poet Trilogy as Clifton Joseph's Pimps, Pimps reverberated off a school auditorium walls, walls. It was rhyme, don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my, I lost my mind, yo. It was hard, soul sonic force, it was the kings of rock. There is none higher, higher. It was writing out every single word of two years ago. A friend of mine asked me to say some MC rhyme. It rhymes, y'all. It was dissing Roxanne and Roxanne dissing back. It was oozing out of seven holes in my head. It was the bridge is over, the bridge is over, but a bye-bye. Words were like licking my feet, sticking to the concrete. Every crevice held a blooming MC with rhyme book in hand. It was spit through tape up mics falling apart at the seams. It was dubbed on staticky cassettes with torn off labels. It was heavy, lifted in clenched fists. Words flew off of tongues on 110 BPMs. Malcolm was resurrected in a sample. Riots were prophesized. Lips tripped up on gin and juice and heads nodded in unison and laid our coast bare. It was abstract poetic, street tales, gangster songs. It was prayers in the night. It was desperate meditation. It was written in scriptures. Word led me to the river and baptized me, threatened to drown me sometimes. Word rose me up, recorded my comings and goings, seeped through my pen and ended up a testament, landed somewhere between slick vocab and intellectual property. Words of my release, our rhyme and our noun reason, our spoken witness, I testify. In the beginning there was. In the beginning there was. In the beginning there was. Word of. Word. Rex Nettleford, an artist, choreographer, scholar, once said that social protest manifests itself in language change, for defiance of society includes defiance of its language. Defiance was once the act of reading. Defiance still can be writing our stories, telling our stories, having the audacity to scribe our narratives in spite of all that has been told before, all that has been silenced, all that has been erased. These writers and poets, these scribologists who transform our experiences into words affirm our existence. They document our times. They illuminate our secrets. They amplify our humanities through the power of words. When Toni Morrison spoke, we do language. That may be the measure of our lives. She gives a profound impact to the gift of language, but also the awareness of the innate desire for us to express and be heard and the unique ways in which we embody the power of word. I know why the cage bird sings. Why brown girls crave tears to dry from their bluest eyes. Why I don my purple way, wearing my head up high. You see, when Maya wrote us notes of hope and Tony threw us rope and Alex covered our shoulders in a violet cloak, we slipped between the sheets and between the sheets folded between those creased up covers, we found the words to bring us home. Where little girls who saw monsters in their mirrors and young ones whose pink folds were torn climbed the paper hills to reach their resurrection. We got revived in chapters, slicing lives and fine pieces, fed on the phrases that filled the holes in my soul. When Sonia called me homegirl and taught me to toss my tunes like hand grenades, when I was holed up in the cold basement, tears choking on my throat, I could see through matted eyes, lines long like roads to take me past those southern trees, those rooted canes and concrete roads. I know why the cage bird sings between iron and bars. I seen light sleep between barbed wire and stone towers, sneaking the velas between our denim and skin, concealing emotional contraband. And when not even one letter will stutter from the nib of our pens, we can find fodder in the phrases of the soul folks who had the courage to reap story in the dirty, in the corners, in the crowded closets that threatened to smother them in shame. And we can raise our heads and swim again. 
I live my 40 days and still don't know if I survived it. From floods to the wilderness, the heart's been fair game. But to those 242 sheets I return to again and again and alone on gray nights or by dawn, move in the morn, I'm reborn. And those same eyes like 1985 straight to the sky rereads every step like a brand new line. And remember that even with weighted wings, we can still sing, we can still fly, we can still write. We can save a life. Thank you. Well, let's lower this a little bit. Hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. How are you guys doing tonight? Oh, come on. How are you all doing tonight? There we go. Well, um, we are the Jazz Ensemble, directed by Kevin Turcott. We are one of the many jazz ensembles that are running at York. And I'm just going to talk a little bit while the rest of my bandmates get set up. Um, so we have Rush on vibes, we have Leah on bass, and then we have, um, we have Reese on drums over there, and my name is Gersh, or Gersharn. And uh, we're going to be doing two tunes for you tonight. It's Every Day I Have a Blues and Dearly Beloved, and we really hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
I'm gonna pack my suitcase and move on down the line. Oh, oh, I'm gonna pack up my suitcase and move on down the line. Where there ain't nobody worried, ain't nobody crying. Every day, every day, I have the blues. I have the blues, I have the blues every day. Speaking of bad luck and trouble, you know I've had my share. Oh, when you see me worried, baby, it's you I hate to lose. Oh, when you see me worried, baby, it's you. featured Rasha on vibes, Leah on bass, and we have Reese on drums. Next is... The next tune is Dearly Beloved, and we hope you enjoy. Somewhere in heaven, you were fashioned for me. Angel eyes, they knew you. Angel voices, me to you. Oh, nothing can save me. They gave me a sign. Shine. 
So we have Rasha on vibes, Leah on bass, and Reese on drums, and I'm Gershon, and we hope you enjoy. Thank you so much. My name is Vanessa Ricketts. No, not the disease. This Ricketts has two T's. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not changing it either, though it is a slave name. It belongs to a family I am proud to claim good people have carried it far. I'm the firstborn in trial one. Had to do everything first. First to run, first to fall, first to fail into the deep end to flounder or float. These days, I just push my sister. I'm sorry. <laughs> According to Myers-Briggs, I'm ultra rare, a paradox of puzzles, both square and flare, the introvert with big dreams and low self-esteem, who put on a smile when I really want to scream, a combination of people trying to live one life, which is why I have to write to give them everything of which they yearn. But now this is my turn. Spoken word gives voice to those unspoken things. The thoughts that clip our wings and keep our true selves trapped in that perpetual tug of war. The thoughts that keep us from wanting more until it's a chore we do every day just to keep it all buried. I want to dig in and free that piece of me the one who doesn't hide behind a mask or sit and wait for anybody to ask that frolicking free spirit of a child who knows no fear. I know she's here. And she is me. That's the best that I can be. Sound. Negro spirituals blast through your radio. House party on Congo Square. They're dancing rituals on Adelaide, Richmond, Young Street, Vaughn Road. All hands raising up and waving side to ghetto gospel. From Sabbath to Saturday, we've carried amps and danced on asteroids. In the beginning there was music. Whether the big beats or big bangs or God whispering in the dark, let there be light. light, light. There has always been music. Beats to rhymes, rhythm to lyrics, voice to words, sound to power. This is the soundtrack that brings us back to life. In the beginning, there was music. Like the old one said, we came out of the wounds crying, meaning that our voices bought the first song. We had to let the world know, this is we. And the universe heard us loud and clear. That's music. In the beginning, there's music. Now, if our voices were the first song, then our heartbeat is the first drum. We march to the beat of a different drum like we keep that natural time, because I am music. Now from the very first day of the very first drum that was carved in the blaze of the African sun to the day of machines and the digitized sounds, we've been making soundtracks for every generation that walked the face of this earth. See, from the beginning of the time, there was the griot who rhymed and sang stories over the beats off the top of the mind. And whether at the pyramids or at Timbuktu, whether about a pharaoh or queen, a family or a whole crew, yo, a griot did in business, they chat about you. And trust me, they even battled too because the griot was the first MC. 
But now flip ahead thousands of years to when a people was stolen. We didn't have time to pick up a book or a poem to remind us of home, man. We couldn't even leave a sign for those we left behind. All we could carry was our tunes and our rhymes, imprisoned in a ship with only songs to remind. We had songs to tell our others, hey, yo, now's the time. We had lyrics to communicate, lyrics to rebel, lyrics to comfort us, lyrics to tell the others, get strong. Yo, you got to make it through. God would never leave you. And we'd sing, kumbaya, my Lord, come by here to erase the fear. That's music. Man, they even outlawed the drum because they knew that the beats would cause us to run, black one. But they couldn't tie up our hands, so we used those instead. They couldn't bind up our feet, we just shuffled out beats. Trinities would bounce bamboo and time on the ground, and we were singing to the fields of the dirty south. And the spirituals, man, those were the codes like, swing low, sweet chariot. Or wait in the water to escape the hound dog scene. That is what our music has been. Now from the mother line to music industries, from digital downloads to burning MP3s, we got Bessie and Bird and Dizzy Gillespie. We got jazz and blues, bebop and rock, made something out of nothing and you use what you got. Turn oil cans into steel pans and now Soka stepping up. Drop codes in Calypso making bodies wind up. Now Toronto Caravan are making tourists line up. We had tracks for marches and tracks for civil rights, tracks to tell the people keep their eyes on the prize. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Feeling black and proud with Godfather James Brown or Aretha's R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Well, Marvin made me wanna holler. From Motown to Tough Gong, new sounds are born, rude boys and girls coming to reason, still chant down Babylon with one love and redemption songs as remembered Zion. And then do 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 dance hall arrives, chatting dubs on 45s, booming systems, battle for sound class supremacy, respect to all the pioneers of Studio One. This is a new generation. And then a youth named Herc from the yards of J.A. moved to the north when he met a next G.J. Amplified the sounds and together they would play records in the park after dark as we say. Battle moves instead of knives. We made a life instead of taking a life. And they called this the nation. And they called this hip hop's generation. Gave b-boys, cardboards, and MCs, mics, answered green walls, and let there be love. Out of this four elements, with knowledge the fifth, now the world's been affected by our poetic gifts of the MCs who are the griots from the beginning of time, and every nation on earth now got our own beats and rhymes. So next time we rap on a stage, or you write on a page, or you freestyle in the hallway, or write your rhymes on a bus, take a minute to ponder a thousand years from now, what will the griots say about us? Through time we have echoed. Through oral spaces, the places we have gathered in and found home. The studio, the radio, the blocko, the jute joint, the jump up, the record store, the revival. These are places where we will not be silent, where our soundscapes insist and resist, where we commune and congregate around the beats and the bass with voices raised in unforgotten melodies, where our voices and our bodies move with life force energy diaspora memory, the spaces, the places where we release. This one is for the dance floor warriors. Four, 4.30, 4.45, the place is emptying, empty or almost empty, except for the moving shadows and the blue and red lights and the slowing spin of the disco ball. We are the dance floor warriors, the soldiers, the shimmying front line who follow the selector down, down with the ship DJ pulls the last tune, saved for the last rite, saved on the altar-like gifts. 
Libation no longer pours. The barkeep wipes the counter, his eye on the watch. The bouncer shakes the back doors, claiming the locks. No more will enter this dark space reserved only for the disciples of the groove. Our packed body heat wanes, but sweat still clings to our backs. This is ritual. These apostles must see the rise of the house lights, the broom in the corner, the pull of the plug. These souls will not abandon the service till the very last decibel dangles and fades out, out, down, down, away, holding on, gone like the amen in the prayer. The final flicker pricks, weak on the EQ, and it disappears. The last square goes black, a moment of silence ensues. Four pairs of hands clap, pulsation of praise, two arms raise, and another back bends low towards the DJ sound booth, palms to the floor. Eyes blink in the fluorescence shining in the ceiling. Interior of the temple now exposed, the scratchy floors and the uneven walls, the clothed and raw in the absence of magic and lights. But the skin, our skin still buzzes. The white noise still lingers. The throne goes black and the power goes pop. Ring then dies in the speakers, the true silence. Time for putting on your coat. The perilous steps over the floor, still sticky with the drinks spilled at the height of the revelry when people left at 2 and 2.20 and 3, but now it's 5. The slow stroll to the exit, the final push, the rush of wind, the bluing sky, the lungs filled with mist and maybe smoke expel white breath into the frosted air that receives our satisfied souls reborn in the on and on and all to the break up, break up, dawn, peace. So we're almost there. Are you entertained? Have you learned something? I want to really thank Motion for teaching them some stuff tonight, but doing it in her way, using art and performance to really blow our minds and engage us tonight. Thank you again to the all-female jazz ensemble under the direction of Kevin Turcott, and to Vanessa Ricketts for her wonderful piece. Last but not least is the choir that requires uh, no introduction, <laughs> led by the director that also requires no introduction. But just so you know, it's the York University Gospel Choir, directed by the one and only Karen Burke. They are so eager to get down here. So I'm just gonna have the band do their thing and let them do their thing, all right? Come on.
So I wanted to give you a little flavor, different types of things. Gospel music is many, many things. It's, a, it's a, an evolving genre. It is only about, you know, 100 years in terms of being termed gospel music the first time in the 1930s. And it is the root of all of the music that we've been hearing here tonight. And this is why uh, we firmly believe, and, uh, and York University has had the vision, to make sure that there's a program here that helps students be better at what they do because they understand the root of the tree. So uh, it is great thanks that I, I give for them for their vision for giving support to the York University Gospel Choir course, which has been here for 15 years, and also these wonderful courses that you've seen here tonight, the R&B Ensemble, the Jazz Ensembles. And the choir um, it has about 80 to 100 students every year. We perform about five times a year on campus, and it is open to anybody who's a student here at York. You can take the course for four separate years. So some of the, the members have been in the choir for three or four years, different times, and then there's whole bunches of them that came in September and knew nothing about gospel music, and now they're just amazing. Um, can I just have the hands of the first, first year, the first timers, put it that way. First timers, yes, okay, good. And the choirs had an opportunity to do some interesting things off campus. This past year, we were singing, we sang at the uh, uh, Canadian Opera Company, the first season's uh, atrium, um, a, a capacity crowd. And it was such an interesting place to be singing, to watch Toronto going by outside the window. And we were doing a full gospel concert in there. So I hope that you will, um, if you like what you're hearing tonight, you will do one of, well, you will hope you'll do both. One thing is that we're having a big conference here next weekend, and it's called <laughs> it's called Power Up. <laughs> That's a good one. Right on cue. Okay. 
And uh, and Power Up is a uh, a full gospel music workshop weekend, which is again open to anyone. Um, it's, it takes place right in this building, and we have registrants here from Thursday night right through until Saturday. And then on Sunday night, while well, they're doing workshops, and right where you're sitting, there are going to be people filled in this place learning gospel music in those seats. And we do it with our live rhythm section, and we teach them as much as we can about gospel music pra performance practice. There's workshops, about 20 different workshops that are run over the weekend with uh, a lot of York alumni that are teaching. And then we do a big concert on Sunday, February the 23rd, and that's going to be at Global Kingdom Ministries in Scarborough. And so um, you can come to the concert, you can find out about the, the workshop weekend if you, if you go to this website. Or I'm going to teach you it. Are you ready? Just like I do for class, we teach by rote. So the, the, the website is called powerupgospel.ca. So all the men in the house, say hey. Yeah. Hey, right. So you're going to say power up. And all the women are going to say gospel. gospel. So this is the men's arm and this is the women's arm. And then we're going to say .ca. Are you ready? Here you go. And. Power up gospel. Power up gospel. Power up gospel .ca. See, you did it. You're very good. You're you did very well at that. Yes, good, good, good. So just in case you forgot. Power up gospel. Power up gospel. Power up gospel.ca. Right, good. So go to that website. You can see all that's happening. And th again, this is a, a wonderful thing that's sponsored, uh, co-sponsored by Toronto Mass Choir and York University. And we appreciate the support of this wonderful university. Now... Uh, the other thing is, our concerts will be not in this theater, but in the theater next door on April 3rd and 4th. We'll be doing a full, a full concert with the, the rhythm section. Can we say enough about our musicians? Can you give them a hand? The, uh, our, our, our full band has five pieces, but um, tonight we are, they are led so well by my partner in crime over here, Mr. Corey Butler on MDRT. <laughs> Corey. And Corey has been teaching here with me at this program for 12 years, and he is excellent at what he does. You see, no music there. No sheets, you see? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Right. And this is Mr. Liam Lackman singing on bass. And just like that, Liam was a vocal student. He was. He was. But just like that's what York is about. You come here, and then you get exposed to other things, and you try other things, yes? So he came in singing, and he's playing bass for me now. I love it. And he's good. He's just good. <laughs> yes. Yes, good. Good. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Thank you for experimenting. It's good. And then, of course, in the back, doing double duty tonight, you also saw him drumming for the R&B Ensemble, and he's plays for us as well. That's Mike Fillion back there. Yeah. And if you come on April 3rd and 4th, you'll also see one of the, the York University's prized possessions, our Hammond organ. Ooh. Yes, and it, it, we, didn't, we didn't bring her out tonight. We'd let her sit tonight. But if you come, you'll see it, her and all her beauty. Eh? Yes, yes, yes. Y'all know what Hammond is, right? Yes. Get an amen. All right, okay, good, good. All right, so we are going to now just do uh, a piece that the choir particularly likes to sing because it has a message just for you.
I want to say a huge thank you to the Jean Augustine Chair. Uh, I have been a huge admirer of Jean Augustine. Yes. And so it is wonderful to be here at this wonderful event that honors your legacy and honors the wonderful vision of those that care about black culture um, around the world, but especially here in Canada. You know, we have, a, we have a work to do to remind each other. I mean, I don't know how many of you knew that gospel music was alive and well in Canada. Did you know that? Yes, yeah, some of you know, but some of you are going like, Martha, I never heard this before in my life. <laughs> right, so we, we, need, we have some work to do in, in, in making sure that we know that the roots are deep here. And, uh, you know, as somebody who's been here, my family's been here for seven generations, and uh, we've been singing, I know it's important for us to, be, to occupy and to teach. And so I find myself here in this privileged position with this wonderful choir that uh, I, I truly love working with. They are a joy and to work with every Tuesday. Tuesday service choir. Yeah. Right. Okay, so we're gonna finish up with this last song, just, which proves again. <laughs> Save it for April 3rd. Okay, okay. Um, that there is a, a, a wonderful, I wonder what, what motion. She said something about drums. You know, they took our drums away, right? So we had to use our hands and our feet. This is important, knowing that the, the Africanisms that were there that were there survive to today in the term call and response. You know this. Call and response is a performance practice that came from West Africa, is found in spirituals, and keeps moving through into contemporary gospel music. So this last song um, is a tribute to that, and also the wonderful community atmosphere of West African music and gospel music in that it's a community-making thing. It's a we thing. And I tell the choir all the time, this is not a you thing, this is not a me thing, this is a we thing. And so this last song is called Blessed Be the Rock, and it's Michaela on Yay! <laughs>
understand. They could be here all night. They could be here all night. So I want to make sure Tika doesn't throw us out now. Okay. <laughs> You're going to have to show them that you want some more. Oh, you got an encore. You can do a little bit better than that. 
the York U Gospel Choir, and their director, Karen Burke, their wonderful rhythm section. Thank you. Now, that is a really hard act to follow, but the person I'm bringing to the podium is more than equipped uh, to do so. Dr. Andrea Davis is Chair of the Department of Humanities and Coordinator of the Black Canadian Studies Certificate. She teaches and supervises in literatures and cultures of the Black Americas, and her research focuses on the literary productions of Black women in the Americas. She is former Interim Director of the Center for Research in Latin America and the Caribbean, and a Research Fellow at the Harriet Tubman Institute for Research on Africa and its Diasporas. She is an accomplished teacher who has won several teaching awards, including the 2017 President's University-wide Teaching Award. Dr. Davis. Thank you so much, Tika. So much of Black History Month is about narrations of Black pain. Blackness as invisibility, as loss, or as a problem to be reconciled, a project in search of redemption and recognition. Those of us who resist the state's and universities' positioning of black people's histories and memories as part of a multicultural or diversity exercise are not looking for acceptance or a validation of our presence. We are here. We have always been here. As some of my students said in a class this week in a powerful intervention into the academy, don't throw your data at us. Don't tell us what we need. Don't speak for us. Today, we didn't come with a list of black achievements and contributions to the development of the nation. We didn't come to memorialize black heroes or black sheroes. We didn't come to talk about programs. We came to celebrate black life and black art because for us, black life is itself already a victory. Even when enclosed by the traumatic past, and the relenting struggles of the present, black life persists, thinks, speaks, sings, moves, imagines its way into new configurations of tomorrow. And so this evening we celebrated what Saidiya Hartman calls the beauty of black ordinary the living and loving and dreaming of black people's lives exceed the frames of history, defy the limits of the official archive, spill into the corridors of the university, the streets, and the city. Motion, Karen Burke, and Mike Cato and their students gave us a glimpse of a soundtrack to a history that hurt but also invited us to listen to different registers of freedom. Voices and bodies in motion, desires beyond containment, rituals to enact a glimpse of a world not yet owned by anyone in which black people can live free and live freely. To the student performers and artists, Help me, please, to give them our deepest thanks. You know, a year, two years or so ago, when my colleague Leslie Sanders and I and, and some, some other friends, Michelle Johnson, um, Carl J. James Kamala Kempadu sat down to think about what a Black Canadian Studies Certificate might look like. We were, we, were, we were adamant about it being in the humanities, and this is what makes this program so different. We didn't want it to be just about 
black history. We didn't want it certainly to be sociology or an anti-racism program. We wanted it to express the fullest range of black thought and black expressive cultures. We wanted our students to know and the academy to know that black people's thoughts, lives, art is valuable, are valuable and worth studying in and of themselves. That we're not here just to teach you how to recognize us, accept us. That's not even our job. Our job is to understand what those histories have brought us, where we are, and how we move through the world towards the creation of a more ethical future. And this is the intervention of the humanities, and this is what you saw tonight. I want to just close by thanking a few people, our main sponsors, Unifor, and the Jean, August, Jean Augustine Chair in Education, held by Professor Carl James, under, you know, made possible through the generous donation and the wonderful vision of the Honorable Jean Augustine, who is here with us this evening. A special thanks to the Jean Augustine Chair, faculty associates, um, professors Michelle Johnson, Leslie Sanders, Naomi Norquay, and Marcia Anisat, and to the key planners of the event, Naomi, where's Naomi? Big shout out, Karen Burke, <laughs> Wendy Motion Brathwaite, my colleague Leslie Sanders, and of course, Tika Pinnock, without which none of this could have happened. To the Faculty of Education and Department of Music for working again to bring this together. A big shout out to the Department of Humanities, where I sit as chair, and the Black Canadian Studies Certificate, which is housed in Humanities. The spoken word artists are all students in Humanities 3165, Griots to MCs, and many of the music students are in, of course, history of um, gospel music or um, African American popular music, all of which are part of the Canadian Studies Certificate. Many of us in this room um, teach in that certificate program. We had student volunteers as well who didn't perform, um, but who are in History 3535, Black Canadian History taught by Professor Johnson. To the performers, the R&B Ensemble and their director, Mike Cato, the York U Gospel Choir and their fabulous director, Karen Burke, the all-female jazz ensemble led by Kevin Turcotte, the Har Harmeet Shack, the steel pen player, Amaka Ekonwo, you are really, really good. Sirtra, my student who I claim. Vanessa, <laughs> Vanessa Ricketts, thank you so much, so much. Finally, thanks to you for coming, for sharing with us this evening, for supporting the university, for making it possible for us to think and teach outside the boundaries. Thank you so much.